Okay, welcome to a new episode of Farm Like a Hero, folks. I'm Richard Perkins. Today I'm here with David and Anna from Help Farm in Hungary. And they joined us for a pasture poultry masterclass and then a market garden masterclass with Curtis Stone. And then they won our competition and were awarded 50,000 euro startup loan with our collaboration with Ecosia. They used that to start up their enterprises, buying land and starting up in spring last year with cattle, sheep and running four and a half thousand broilers, which they've also built a dedicated poultry slaughterhouse and smoking facility for. The farm's also in line to become the savory hub for Hungary, so super excited to welcome you to the show. Thanks so much for being with us today, folks. Thanks for the introduction. That's Thanks for having us. Yes. That, that's about the short of what we do currently. Yes. So we awesome. are here. Um, welcome everyone who's watching. Um, and yeah, I'm Anna. This is David. That's probably easy to figure out. Um, <laughs> but that's, that's who we are. So. Awesome. We always start by asking, like, uh, tell us a bit of your backstory, how you got into farming. I know you came from a different line of work originally. So yes. tell us about your journey into this. Yes. Well, David was the one who started the whole thing. Um, yeah, yeah. I think it was like six years ago when I, I was totally fed up with society and all of the stress and everything. And I, I just sold everything that I had, every business and every website I developed and I just booked a farm in the middle of nowhere and <laughs> it was in a forest. It, it was literally in the middle of a yeah. national park. So it was a beautiful scenery uh, and undisturbed by people. So very, very secluded. Yeah. And, and I just wanted to, I just wanted to be self-sustainable, uh, make my own food, make my own house and other stuff. So this, this romantic way of living, yeah. And people told me that I will never find a woman that we wanted to wanted the to same live thing. there in the yeah. middle of nowhere. And then five years ago, I came into the picture, so I moved in. And what was your first reaction when we went on the dirt road? Oh yeah, uh, yeah. The moment that we took, because because uh, you know you have your main road, and then you have to take a turn into the forest. And as we were going there, I was like this person might just be a serial killer, <laughs> but at least the scenery is very beautiful. <laughs> so no, it worked out very well. Um, we, we've, we've been together and doing all of this farming and self-sustainable thing for years and years. Um, and I kind of joined in on the whole thing. It wasn't necessarily one of my interests before this. I thought of myself as being ecologically conscious, which looking back, I was, absolutely not like you know if you take a tote bag to the, to the when you do your shopping it's not all that much that you're doing for mother nature yeah. um, <laughs> but uh, i i just developed a taste for it as we were living together yeah. i it's it would be difficult to imagine my life otherwise anymore so back then we only had two cows and the permaculture garden and other very small enterprises just for ourselves and our family and we have a we had a very uh, calm, very very stressless life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And one of our bad day, we just stumble upon on your YouTube channel and Alan Savory, and everything's changed. Uh, yeah, actually, <laughs> actually, we were on our way to your farm in Oslo when you showed when you discovered uh, Alan Savory's TED talk. Oh. Remember, yeah. we were in the we were in an Airbnb, and you were like, "You have to watch this. This is like this is a game changer." Um, and and I remember I was really struck by it. We were also going on your farm, so that was a very new experience for us too. We've never slaughtered anything in our lives before that. I um, was a city girl, so she never. Yeah. I'll, oh, I used to. Saw I, anything like this? Yeah, I um, I uh, used to be just just because he asked us about our background. So, yeah. uh, you work with computers, IT. IT, IT. Yeah, and I was a fashion designer and seamstress, um, working with historical and folkloric fashions, uh, which I still do for myself. But that's just 
that's just a teeny tiny hobby that farm life allows you know <laughs> tiny, tiny amounts that you can spare five minutes every day yeah um <laughs> So, um, so hang on, how come you gave up your lovely stressless life to have a, a pretty full on farming life? Um, it was because I, I remember one morning you came back from your morning jog and you just said, we have to change something. Yeah. And we sat down, it was just like a, a September morning or something, right? And you said we have to move like this just doesn't do we can't do the impact that we want we are not able to buy any land we are just selfish yes so um, we had we had everything that we wanted but still the 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 world is going in a wrong direction and we really don't have any impact we don't we are not part of the solution we are just living in the middle of the forest and we are a little bit selfish you it, know because we had everything but only for ourselves yes. we weren't producing anything for the community or for the world or for it, we we weren't producing any any uh, value, value. To yes yes none so then we realized we wanted to move yeah uh and to get started... more to get to have a bigger land base to yes. be able to yeah so over there, as I said, we were living in the middle of a national park. Uh, we had about three hectares, a little bit less, but that was it. And there was no chance of us ever being able to buy more land because national parks don't sell land. Mm. I'm not going to get into the details of that. Um, so we just sat down that morning and we wrote ourselves a list of the things that we really, really want, you know, a list of priorities of what we are looking for in our land. And then, you know, like, would be nice to have, and then like, <laughs> optional, but I'd be happy if it was there. Um, and uh, we started looking with this checklist. Um, and there was not too many sites. Candidates, not too many lands, site, yeah. lands in the country that fit most of the uh, most of the requirements yeah. uh, what is access to land like there and and like land prices there just for listeners context um uh, land prices are very low compared to other part of europe parts of europe uh, because we have some very strict laws how you can buy lands it's very similar to france Mm -hmm. So it's very, very protective uh, laws. For example, you need, uh, uh, you need to study, you need to have a paper um, accreditation. What is that? Like a farming, to say you're a farmer, to be able to buy land, yeah. does it? Yeah. To buy land, so you can, uh, you can show that you know what you are doing. And this is only, you can do only this in, in uh, Hungarian. So most of the people from Europe are out of this. Oh yeah, you have to have the certification in Hungarian. So that's kind of the, the way of, uh, of the government making sure that most of the lands will stay in Hungarian ownership. Yeah. yeah. So the land prices are cheap, but we have the same, uh, same uh, situation like everywhere in the world. So they're starting to get uh, be big players and the small ones started to give up. Yeah. So it's kind of a concentration of land also. And it's very similar, like other places, the, the average age of the farmer is 58 here. It's not that bad in like in, in Japan or something, but 58 and there is no new generation. So if you how, are, how familiar are these ideas? Like, are you really out there on a limb over in Hungary? Is there, you know, have you networked much with people in the country? Are there any other people thinking along these lines? A handful, but not too many. Yeah. To be honest, we we really hope to inspire some more, uh, some some youth to to take on this career or career path or whatever you want to call it. Um, it's it's a very it's it's one of our our goals to be an inspiration to other young people because yeah. it just it just can't go on and they the don't know how cool right is now. this yeah 
Yeah, like it, there's so many awesome things that you can only afford. There are life luxuries that you can only afford yes. if you are a, a farmer or, or if you live so close to the land. Um, and things that money could, will never be able to buy yes. you, no matter how rich you are. And I'm not talking about experiences, but the quality of food, mm. the luxury of saying, ah, oh, I found this shiitake on the lock today. I'll just throw it in the omelette when other people are... <laughs> Because. Or to the chickens, because I don't want to eat it anymore. It's, it's, it's luxury, which uh, cannot be described with any mm. other word, I think. So, yeah. so you tell us a bit about how you found that site. So you're looking for new land and that with, through the Ecosia thing, you got the loan capital to be able to start yeah. up in the way you wanted. So what was the process then? You, you were still just looking for land at that point, weren't you? And one, one small note that we were very, very, very lucky, not just with Ecosia, but we could sell our farm incredibly fast. In a matter of months. <laughs> we um, even didn't start to advertise it. It's just... The, the, the thing is uh, that the, the previous owner of this farm really, really wanted us to stay. <laughs> So she started to advertise our old farm for us and she, <laughs> she found us buyers in, yeah. in like three or four months, I think, from, from when we moved here. So in, we had that three okay. months to uh, close the deal yeah. and we, we get a very good price and everything went very smooth. So that money helped us a lot. Yeah. So, so hang on, that, you got to fill us in on that story. Yeah. So you'd come and met the owner of the farm you're at now. And she liked you so much, she helped you sell your old farm. Um, yes. Yeah, kind of. So, so the, yes. the, the timeline yes. of this was we started looking for farms for, for, new, for new land yeah. in, um, November. in November. We came out here in the middle of November, kind of early November. December, something. Maybe. Yeah. Um, and um, uh, I fell in love with the scenery. It's a lot more like my... Um, I'm, I'm from Transylvania originally, and it's a lot more like that area. Um, so for me, it struck a lot, it struck a lot of heartstrings. So um, it was partially a sentimental decision for me. But uh, as we were looking at our checklist, it, it ticked so many of the boxes, like 80% of the boxes at least. And none of, none of the other sites even got near to, close, to it. Yeah. So like even, not even like 50%. Mm. for us um so we really liked this one this was the first land and I, that we checked out and it was the only one that we actually checked out um uh, in like a month or two i think yeah. we came back just one more time to walk around do look, look at the buildings a little bit more up close and um yeah we just decided to buy it mm -hmm. 